And I guess this yeah. jives into our next topic, which is the do little approach of Manitoba, where the province's argument has been initially that they don't want to provide these benefits because they don't want to duplicate federal services. But there's stuff that the province really does, like aid to renters that they haven't done. They recently did a U-turn when it comes to small and medium businesses where they had a Manitoba gap protection program, uh, which is meant for to provide aid to businesses that are ineligible for all the federal aid that's coming out. And it's a $120 million program. Uh, but on the flip side, the province has been doing some actively harmful stuff uh, where they've wanted uh, the mush sector, which is a sort of cutesy name uh, for the public sector, but not core provincial civil service, but still things that sort of get a lot of their funding from the province. So municipalities, universities, school boards, uh, to start looking at economizing. And they've told uh, the universities to prepare for 10%, 20%, and 30% cuts, despite an increased demand for virtual learning. And it looks like they're doing a bit of a backpedal on that right now. And they're also Good. wanting to reduce uh, civil servants to two days a week and want the federal government through this EI work share program, which is currently ineligible to the public sector to top this up. Uh, and their whole reasoning for these cuts is, oh, uh, our uh, revenues are falling, so so we have to do them. Uh, but uh, I guess I've summarized it enough at this point. Uh, so what are some of your thoughts on, on this whole approach to financial, to the finances and services that the province is adopting during this crisis? Yeah, well, I think it's summed up perfectly when you said do a little approach at Manitoba. Basically, it, the Manitoba government is just pretty much standing by and just watching and just, just let, you know, passing the buck or to the, the federal government to, to, to take matters into the hands, right? And uh, which the federal government has. Um, and, I, and I suspect it's been happening because it's a minority government mm -hmm. and uh, I, I believe the, the NDP have really stepped up and forced the liberals to be more, uh, I guess more, so, I don't want to use the word generous because it's our money, right? More <laughs> that supportive. We're, we're, right. It, it just, to, you know, to give more help to people, to more people. Um, so I guess that that's, you can take the, the minority government for that. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling and the, the off the cuff remarks from the premier, it's just how, you know, these business owners are complaining about not getting their low wage staff back because they make more money on CERB. Right. Uh, I, and I have a feeling come Monday first or come Tuesday, the first report will be that business owners are complaining they can't get their workers back, right? Because CERB is paying them more. And I, I, I don't like I don't like that at all. I feel like uh, it's a global pandemic. And who is the who are the, the business owners to complain about? A person deciding for the family safe, their family, the potentially their family's safety, and their parents to, to stay home, mm -hmm. to flatten the curve like they wanted, 
and then they're getting like uh, shamed on doing that. That that's just ridiculous. It it, it it makes me very angry. Yeah, and I have a sort of uh, or I have a transcription of this off the cuff remark uh, that the premier made on uh, April 29th, with, which was a Wednesday. Uh, and his remark, we are fighting against a federal program that is actually paying people to stay out of the workforce right now. I don't like the fact that the, it is real, but that is real. People are being paid to stay home and not work, Premier Pallister said. Yeah. I, I mean, they're being paid to stay home because that, that was what was needed to happen to allow physical distancing. And yeah, I, I think that's a really saying he doesn't like the fact that this program is real. Uh, while he's done nothing, uh, or he's done very little, uh, I I think that's just app appalling. Uh, uh, Serb, I, Serb, yeah, yeah. Serb has been a life-saving program, in my opinion. Absolutely, and it's doing what it's meant to do, flattening the curve. Mm -hmm. like the, the reason you're able, uh, the Premier is even able to talk about reopening and plan going forward to reopening the province is, I think, because of Serb. No Serb, people are, we're going to start, we're going to continue risking themselves to try to go to work and, you know, make ends meet and stuff like that, right? You got to, it, it, it took the choice out of, you know, health and money as, as far as paying the bills and stuff, right?